night. I'm Rick Eads, E-A-D-E-S. I'm a geologist, went to West Virginia University, graduated with honors, got a master's degree from UMass Amherst, worked 26 years in the field, doing a lot of what you're doing, environmental impact studies, or one of the things we did at Science Applications International Corporation, Midwest Research Institute, and others. I teach high school right here. I teach physics right here at Jackson High School now, the last seven years. I got here largely because of the springs of Monroe County. As a hydrogeologist at UMass, that's what we really studied was groundwater the entire time. My master's focused on Boston's water supply. This water supply is much more pristine. Let's put some numbers to what people have been talking about tonight. We have three springs here documented back to the 1930s by the West Virginia Geologic and Economic Survey that are pumping out over 1,000 gallons a minute. These are the very ones that pepper the entire side of the mountain, about a 50-mile expanse. The recharge area is poorly understood. I would challenge the EIS to, to document clearly where all of that rain is recharging these springs because that's about 5 billion gallons of water a year. The three springs uh, feed Turkey Creek, Rich Creek, and Dropping Lick Creek, just three trout streams, two of them reproducing, one of them a uh, home of aquaculture. We'd like to look at the economic impacts from an environmental problem that could knock out a trout hatcher that's raised 3 million trout a year. Um, we have other springs that are raising uh, thousands, of, tens of thousands of trout. We have a bottled water industry, you heard from Howdy Hendricks tonight, that's uh, about a million dollars a year in sales. I'd like to know exactly how will the EIS define the recharge area. This mountain has been folded and faulted. It's not like the other counties that the pipeline will come through in West Virginia. Those are in the Allegheny Plateau. These folds and faults have fractured the mountain. The steepness is extraordinary. Uh, without dye testing, I'm not sure how you're going to do an environmental impact study or tell me how the recharge is not going to be affected from the disturbed land, from construction and operation and maintenance. Should the pipeline leak, and many have testified here tonight and asked you at the EIS, look at the age, the specifications on the pipelines that we see leaking all over the country, about 1,700,000 miles under some databases in the country today in oil and gas pipelines. What we're seeing is one common factor, exacerbated by acid rain, which we have here, exacerbated by shallow soils, which we have here, steep landscapes, which we have here, a lot of corrosion, a lot of problems. Define the recharge area accurately, completely, protect not just those springs, but WVU found 200 in a six mile section a few years back. So I think your hands will be full just doing hydrogeology. We'll look forward to seeing it. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. My name is Cookie Cole. I'm from Salt Sulphur Springs, West Virginia. And I'm here tonight, which I was going to read a letter I put in Monroe Watchman back in February, which that's a real good place to get your information. They tell how it is. But what I want to tell you all here tonight is, you want to know everybody's credentials. Well, I graduated from Union High School. I've been here on this mountain and in this valley all my life, just about, except the time I spent Cleveland, Ohio, while my dad was working in a steel mill after he got out of World War II, where he served his country. And he come back to these mountains and valleys like other veterans and the people in war. Where do they get them? They get them out of West Virginia. Well, they come back to these mountain valleys and the homeland we have here in Monroe County and surrounding areas, it's all precious. God made it. We're here to defend it and take care of it because we live in a delicate balance with nature. We get along with Mother Nature. It takes care of us and we take care of her. And I know you all can't understand that because you live in this city, you get your water out of the sink. By the way, I also testified in front of Congress years ago due to another cultural attachment, environmental issue about Peters Mountain, Monroe County, and our beautiful surrounding areas. And all I can tell you all is, I will try to read one little thing I did put in this watchman because I'm so upset. I've got high blood pressure. Everybody here is heartbroken sick but we will all stand together because it's not just a five mile radius we want stopped in. We don't want it anywhere. I grew up in the 50s and 60s where you had to get underneath your desk at school to hope to God they didn't drop the atomic bomb on you. I now live in the zone, which before I knew they wanted to put it through the middle of my farm and rape 85 acres of the most precious 
sacred, holy ground in Monroe County with ancient oak trees, Indian burial grounds, a frog pond in the middle of it. I know you're looking at your watch, but buddy, I spent 60 years defending this country from a small child being born. And my family has fought and lived in this county and helped found the foundations while you're sitting here on this table here today watch where you're at. And all I know is, I know you all will want to do the fair thing and the right thing for the people. It's for the people of the state of West Virginia to say that, you know, my dad fought to free the people overseas. In France, it's against the law of frack. They're not bringing gas lines through their property lines. You know why? They're not going to mess up their environment. Their minister, or whatever you call him, prime minister over there, there was a thing. If y'all ever want to watch some other stuff, go to Free Speech TV, buddy, the one like me. But all I want to tell y'all is, please do the right thing by us. My father and all the other veterans, which live, I might add, in the blast zone, if it ever goes. I haven't slept a wink at night since I heard about it, because worrying about, oh my God, is the thing going to blow up? It's going to vaporize everything within a mile, not counting the shock in the air. I know you're going to say, Thank, thank you for your down. comments, but I need you to do me one favor. What's that? You forgot to spell your name for the call. My name call. is C-O-O-K-I-E, Cole. Patricia Ann, if you want it in another way, but it don't matter. Everybody knows who I am that really cares. But the bottom line is, y'all, please, please, for God's sake, open your eyes and your hearts and listen. It's our water. There's no replace for We'd water. We'd like to ask number 13 to come up to the podium now, please. Yes. Thank you for your time. Good evening, my name is Nancy Dickinson, D-I-C-K-I-N-S-O-N. Um, I am not on the route, but I will be severely impacted by it. Um, this may not be the appropriate place for these comments, um, and I certainly um, want to thank all the people that have already spoken, and I agree with most of the environmental issues that have been brought up. What I'd like to talk about, um, which um, Bob just talked about as well, was a comment that Mr. Washburn submitted to FERC back in December of 2004 in which he challenges MVP's necessity for this pipeline. And I'd like to, to cite at least three issues where um, MVP was off the mark. One being that they do not clearly identify the end users in the three demand areas, leaving the demand areas undefined. MVP also has not in, in defined the increased demand in the mid-Atlantic region they have not demonstrated any transport mechanisms to the end users in that area. And third, MVP has presented cost data which is not consistent with the historical U.S. Energy Information Administration pricing data. And finally, they do not take into consideration other pipelines that are under expansion or under FERC consideration, which confirms, as the gentleman spoke earlier, that they're, we're not, they're not even going to come close to a need until 2040. I'm hoping that um, FERC will address these issues in the EIS or in some other forum, because before we even get any of the environmental issues, where's the need? Thank you. Thank you for your comment. South, S-O-U-T-A. And I live on the base of Peters Mountain. We own a farm there where six kids were raised by a very loving father who taught us everything to enjoy about the mountain and the precious water, and our mother too. But both of their, them are passed on now, and they would want us here fighting for what they believed in and they came back home for, and that's what we're fighting for. I'm a farmer and a rental cabin owner, and we have a gentle side of life that God meant for us to live. I would like to load each one of you up and take you to the top of Peter's Mountain so you could see the New River Valley to the west and the mountains, so you could see the New River Valley to the west and the mountains of Virginia to the east. I would like to have you taste the pure mountain spring water. There is none better, just as there is none be no better view from Peter's Mountain. The legendary fame of Peters Mountain Water has continued and grown as local residents, public water districts, and award-winning commercial spring water companies use the slopes of Peters Mountain for a water supply. 
On both the northwestern and southeastern slopes of Peters Mountain, many local residents depend upon untreated groundwater, springs, or even surface water for drinking water supplies. It is not uncommon for spring water to be piped thousands of feet from mid-slopes of the mountain to homes in the valley. Public water supplies also depend on Peters Mountain water, including from the south to north along the northwestern slope, Red Sulphur Public District, the Union Water System, and the Gap Mills Public Water System. All through, although the Peters Mountain area, water is primary resource produced by the mountain as it feeds the water and tributaries of Rich Creek and Indian Creek in the New River Valley into the James River watershed. Both the actual quality and the reputation of Peters Mountain water are therefore of critical importance to Monroe County and to the region. The quality and the reputation of the waters of Peters Mountain, the gushing springs and living waters at the foot of Peters Mountain that we have, MVP, our gas line would destroy. I would be two miles down from this and pure devastation. We're also, I want to talk to you a little bit about the cultural attachment. We were one of the families that were studied cultural attachment when we fought this power line. There's no difference. This is a much bigger problem. And one thing about it, it's just like riding to the top of Peter's Mountain to catch the best sunset. Could you imagine what that would look like on the top of Peter's Mountain? The rocks, there's no, just no way. It's like drinking cold, pure water from the faucet or straight from the creek. Have you ever done that? Well, I was raised doing that. It's like knowing the square, firm, covered rocks where your father actually went to school. There's a very big cultural attachment, and you please need to take that into consideration. Thank you very much for your comments. Number 25. My name is Maury Johnson. That's M-A-U-R-Y Johnson. There's yes, sir. I live at the foot of Ellison's Ridge in the Hands Creek Valley near Greenville here in Monroe County. My family are among the earliest settlers. I'm a lifelong resident, by the way. My family is uh, among the earliest settlers in this valley, coming here in the 1700s, some of them. The Johnsons and Johnsons Crossroads, the Millers and the Manns, who settled near Assurance and Springfield, the Cooks and Shanklins, who came from Indian Creek, Hands Creek, Ellison's Ridge, and Greenville. My family has a long, long history of being stewards of the earth and protectors of this county and this country. I have many relatives who served in the, their county their count, count, uh, countries proudly in the U.S. military. My brother was killed and buried on my eighth birthday in 1968 in Vietnam. My daughter currently served in the U.S. Navy that's on the U.S.S. Rush War, getting ready to do her second deployment to the Persian Gulf. While they stand up for our freedoms, we are under attack by corporations such as EQT and Nextair, MVP LLC, who want to destroy everything that we hold dear and take property for a private gain. My daughter wants to come back and build a place overlooking what would be a pipeline route. In my area, we want to, they want to endanger many springs, wells, homes, such as various plants and wildlife. Just a few examples of this area of on my farm. There's an area where I've managed for over 30 years woodcocks and woodwills in this area, certified by the Western Department of Natural Resources. The Wibble Wheels will have more there than any place possibly in any state, West Virginia or Virginia. Last night I counted 13 separate Whipple Wheel calls. We have the only, one of the only certified nesting grounds of American woodcocks in the state. That's been documented by WDHHR. They forgot to mention that though in their report to you all. This, if this pipeline was built across my farm, it would go right straight to the middle of this and totally destroy this area. There many people come to enjoy the Whipple Wheel calls. It would cross, it would also cross and run across the bear habitat on Ellison's Ridge. Critical eagle habitat. I suspect there's probably a nest. We just haven't found it yet. In the Hands Creek, Ellison's Ridge, and in the uh, Indian Creek Valleys. Many, I've seen as many as nine. I have pictures of nine eagles last fall. It would cross within the feet of a historic artesian spring on top of Ellison's Ridge. It would also pass very close or through many significant springs, wells, wetlands, cars to feed the and supply the water of the entire area. Real quickly, we have a farmer in our valley 
He's not in the pipeline route, but he runs the pipeline right, right down the Hanch Creek Valley. He's organic. A diesel fuel spill puts his man out of business. He has milk. He goes nationally through a national distributor. I see that the thing that they're getting ready to flash. I don't have enough time to tell you everything that's going to do, and I will send you a letter. Thank you very much. Stay Thank you for your comments. Chasnoff, C H A S N O F F. I'm a longtime resident of Monroe County, and I live on Peters Mountain with a big, bold, beautiful spring that is threatened by the MVP construction, if it should occur. There are hundreds of private citizens volunteering and dedicating countless hours to, to the struggle to stop MVP from being built. A lot of that effort is focused in a very constructive way. Citizens are bringing to the FERC's attention detailed information about the geological and hydrological features that make MVP such an ill-conceived, poorly planned, potentially disastrous project. The amount of time and energy going into this effort is unprecedented, and the wealth of significant information about the harm to the public that will result from the construction of MVP, if it is allowed to be built, warrants an unprecedented response from the FERC with respect to staff hours days, weeks, and months that will be necessary to digest and evaluate the flood of pertinent information that the FERC will receive during the scoping period. I call upon the FERC to prepare to be amazed, amazed at the richness of the landscapes that MVP proposes to, to traverse, amazed at the density of these beautiful features in the rugged mountainous landscape and the rich fertile valleys and hills that make up this vulnerable karst region of Virginia and West Virginia. The FERC must do what it takes to verify, to map, to study, and to evaluate the information that the public will be submitting. The size and the scope of the job ahead will be gigantic, but it's the responsibility of our government to understand and to respond to the enormity of the potential calamity that MVP represents for this region. The people here are experts about their land, their water, and their lives. Listen to these people. Topic number two. MVP is described in EQT's pre-filing documents as a frac gas pipeline designed to transfer frac gas from Pennsylvania and West Virginia to distant markets. One cannot study the environmental effects of this proposal without considering the environmental effects of the gas itself, which is the content and the purpose of this proposed project. Thank you for your comments, Joe, and I know you'll submit detailed written comments to the FERC record. Right. 